And now you will learn about the alien signal and how to communicate anonymously. Hello everyone! You hear? And I don't hear. But that doesn't mean it is not there. And now I'm talking about signals from space. After all, it is likely that aliens are downright screaming in our ears, but we cannot understand this. Since this speech may not be a sound for us at all, but something beyond our understanding. Nevertheless, today we will talk about a signal of extraterrestrial origin, which we managed to catch. Let me tell you right away, this is not a fake. The signal of extraterrestrial origin was indeed picked up by a radio telescope called the Big Ear. This ear, unlike ours, which is small and crooked, can hear these kinds of messages. But before we start to delve into the topic, let me tell you how it was. On August 15, 1977, Dr. Jerry Amon recorded a signal of unknown, presumably extraterrestrial origin. The signal was picked up by the Big Air Radio Telescope at Ohio State University during programs to detect activity of extraterrestrial civilizations. The signal lasted only 72 seconds and is still a mystery. What was it? A glitch in the system or aliens? We're here to find out the truth. You must feel confused, because this is considered irrefutable proof of the existence of extraterrestrial intelligence. Just imagine, we're not alone in the universe. Is it great? Or on the contrary, it is frightening? You'll come to your conclusion after you hear this message, but about that later. Why is the signal called WOW? It's simple. Jerry Amon seen this on the printout. Was very surprised and wrote, Wow, so delight. I don't know what to write, I'll write, wow. He couldn't have written, oh shit, and then that signal would have been called, oh shit signal. I don't think that sounds pretty right. So, what do these letters and numbers mean? Doubt you can get it because there are ones and twos everywhere. Reminds a straight password to your Instagram page. Why did this surprise Jerry Amon so much and then the whole world? 24 hours a day, 7 days a week we receive a huge amount of radio signals. Put the radio on a random frequency and you will hear these noises. The point is that to transmit for instance, music on the radio, we use encoding. Relatively speaking, we encode music into radio waves, then send radio waves, get them at the receiver, decode and hear music. The big ear worked in a similar way. Only now the signals were not decoded into sounds. The intensity of the signals was recorded on paper. Digits were used for this. When the numbers run out, they began to use the letters from the Latin alphabet, from A to Z. And just imagine, we see such a picture. One, two, three. It's okay. The six was generally considered something out of the ordinary. Well, now imagine such a situation. 6 E Q U J 5 This is actually almost the end of the alphabet, and it seemed something abnormal. Ones and twos, by the way, are just cosmic radiation and this signal was 30 times more powerful. Never before has Big Air caught anything like this. Let's talk a bit about the radio telescope itself. This is important and has a direct bearing on our history. When someone says the word telescope to you, what would you think of? It is logical that it is. When a radio telescope, many of you will recall this. And you will be right. But Big Air was an ugly duckling. Here it is, more like a football field. And as you can see, it does not have a mobile antenna. 
And this radio telescope uses the Earth's rotation to scan it. Imagine, there's an alien ship somewhere out there in space and it's giving us a signal. The Earth spins, picks up the signal, but it spins further and, mind you, this is another stone in the mud of those who think the Earth is flat. This is the only time in history that this radio telescope has ever caught a signal of this intensity. As we can see in this graph, the intensity of the signal first increased, then decreased. Well, indeed, as we gradually approach a signal, its intensity at the receiver should increase. This makes sense. Given the limited reception width, the signal, according to the plan, should first increase for 36 seconds and then another 36 seconds decrease. And so it turned out. The peak was right there, and the intensity was amazing. The big ear follows the cosmos in a single line. This means that in order to hear that signal again, you have to wait for the next hit on that point. In 1980 it was given the option of fixing a single point and looking at it. But since this was not available in 1977, the signal was lost the next time. When the big air was pointed there, there was nothing anymore. And the subsequent study of this point with other powerful radio telescopes yielded nothing. No, surprisingly, there are no nearby stars. There is nothing, there's just space. So the signal itself was left, then 24 hours old. What was it? A distress signal, a threat against us. Or something worse. What's so special about the WOW signal? It's almost impossible to explain. The frequency on which the signal was received is forbidden for use on Earth. Here's the thing. Physicists Bernard M. Oliver, Giuseppe Cocconi and Philip Morrison were convinced that 1420 MHz was the most appropriate frequency for interstellar communication. Water is very, very important. Without water we would have died, as it were and all forms of life should understand this. A water molecule is made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen. After browsing the internet, we find out that hydrogen also radiates at the frequency of 1420 MHz. Oliver called this strip the waterhole. It's like he set up a line for interstellar texting. And now this frequency is directly a hope for those who want to find aliens. Have you heard of Telegram? That's all a joke. If you want real anonymous communication, communicate with hydrogen. Remember what I said? I really hope we will return to this. And now we have finally reached the signal that we all so want to hear. This recording has gained almost a million views and is considered the very recording of 1977, which is 72 seconds. Just a warning, it's going to be quite creepy. How's that? Did it give you goosebumps? It feels like you can hear the cosmos believe that we are not alone in the universe. And maybe someday we will find out more and go far. Far away in search of those who send this message. Or maybe they're already on their way to us. Or maybe it's just a set of noises. Or not just a set of noises. Now fasten your seatbelts. How do they say it on YouTube? What I've heard could not be explained. I sped up the tape and heard something frightening. It was very frightening. I'll tell you about that in a moment.
I'm not comfortable with it either. They're trying to communicate with us. I can't believe it. Okay, we heard the voice, yes. Now let's speed this tape up some more. The voice becomes clearer and you can tell it's a man. It's hard to make out his speech, of course, but it's still possible. He says in English, we lost at 7 p.m. We've got at 10.61. 10.61. What does it mean? For this we'll need Google and look up 10.61. Obviously, it's a code of some kind. Turns out it's a police code indicating a suspicious vehicle stop. I feel like Sherlock and I love it. I mean, it's just a fake. Police radio accelerated many times over. This is the kind of things where fake spreads for the sake of use. I decided to look up this big air radio telescope website and find out that there was no recording equipment there at the time. That is, there can be no audio recordings at all. The fake has been dealt with. And now the main question. Who sent the signal? Ufologists, for example, are convinced that it was aliens. But since ufology is a pseudoscience that has nothing to do with science, they can think whatever they want. But astronomy professor Antonio Perez disagreed with them. He came up with the idea. Let me see what comets were passing in that place at the time the signal came from. From the constellation of Sagittarius. After all, in 1977 they were not really looking for comets. And no one knew which one was flying by. And he found out that at that time there were two comets at the same time. Christensen and Gibbs. The point is that, as it turned out, comets for a million kilometers around themselves emit hydrogen gas. I'm not an astrophysicist. But there are whole studies devoted to it and it is an established fact. Remember what I said about hydrogen? That it emits at 1420 MHz? And the signal was picked up on that frequency? Now find the connection. Ufologist, of course, did not accept this, said, Are you stupid? How can you hear anything at this distance at all? But it was possible to check it out. From November 27, 2016 to February 24, 2017, 200 studies were conducted. Research has shown that Comet Christensen does in fact send a signal at this frequency to Earth. The radio telescope was moved to 1 degree, no signal. Pointed at the comet, there is a signal. Three random comets from the JPL small body database were also observed. Comet Tanagra, Pan Stars and Linear. And what do you think? The same radio signal. Which means that whatever comet was passing through the constellation of Sagittarius at the time, the big ear would still have picked up the signal simply because of luck, which has been the mystery all along. For the sake of fairness, it's worth noting that several employees of SETI, the program for the search for extraterrestrial civilizations, strongly disagree with this study and continue to search for extraterrestrial civilizations. Well, how can you blame them? They are, after all, interested parties. On the other hand, this project is looking for aliens in certain radio bands. Okay, what if it doesn't make sense? We think they are sending out signals on that frequency. Yeah, what kind of nonsense is that? They couldn't be doing absolutely anything for billions of miles and we wouldn't even catch it. How can we know 100% and we don't know, we just show the most explainable option. After all, there is essentially a possibility that it could have been anything. A small one, but a probability. Remember the human message to aliens that was broadcast into space by the Arecibo Observatory? 
It makes sense that the aliens would wait for another signal, but they wouldn't, because we didn't send anything else to that place. Likewise, we heard once, we wait. And there is no second time. We, like those aliens, who think it was some kind of glitch. To wait for a response, we have to send a signal all the time. Hmm, should we? Are you aware that Stephen Hawking was convinced that we don't need to do that? Because bad aliens would come and torture us and stuff like that. This is food for thought. I have provided you with all the known facts, and only after learning the material you may believe in obvious things or not. All references are in the description. Study and think critically. There is no need to believe me. I'm not a scientist, after all. Give me a like and be sure to subscribe. Good luck!